As we all know, uh, FLIN3 uh, ITD mutations are uh, associated with, uh, with poor prognosis in FLIN3 mutated AML. These patients tend to relapse, and when they relapse, their uh, survival is poor. So to remedy this, we combined uh, the cytobine with reditoclax in uh, addition to cruzartanib. So we call this as a, as a triplet regimen. In this uh, triplet regimen, our, uh, we use uh, this triplet regimen based on our uh, preclinical data suggesting that when we combine venetoclax with a FLIP3 inhibitor, they, they, there's a known synergy in, in cell lines, in, in, uh, in animal models. So we use that knowledge and we uh, design this phase one and two uh, clinical trial. So we essentially use the cytobine and venetoclax as a backbone and added a FLIP3 inhibitor. We tested two dose levels, 20 milligram cuzartinib and 30 milligram uh, cuzartinib. And our uh, target dose has been established, recommended phase two doses as established uh, as uh, 30 milligram daily cuzartinib. So uh, these, uh, we treated, uh, so far we treated 35 patients in this study and 28 had, uh, they were relapse refractory and seven patients were frontline. In the relapse refractory arm, the, these are heavily treated patients. They, the median number of prior therapies were three. About 80% of those have received a prior FLIT3 inhibitor, and mostly they received prior giltretinib, which is, as you know, is the um, FDA-approved uh, regimen for relapse refractory AML. So they were heavily pre-treated. In the relapse refractory uh, uh, cohort, we had seven patients so far. We have, it, it continues to enroll. And uh, when we look at the responses, about 80%, to be specific, 82% of the relapse refractory patients achieved a composite CR, which means either CR or CR with incomplete count recovery or, or marrow free, free remission. In the relapse refractory, the responses were much better. Uh, out of seven patients, all seven achieved a remission, and they were CR and uh, CR with incomplete count recoveries. So uh, the, the, in, the, in the relapse refractory arm, the, the success of the study was about 40% of those were able to bridge the allogenic transplant, which you would like to do in, uh, in relapse refractory settings. So you want to make sure that these patients go into allogenic transplant as soon as they achieve remission. And with that, uh, the median uh, overall survival in the cohort were uh, 7.2 months. So this is uh, much better than our when we compare it to our historical control patients, which are uh, which have received prior FLIP3 inhibitors. Really, the, the median survival uh, in, in our hands ranges from two months to five months. So in the in the frontline cohort, the uh, again seven patients, but about uh, three were able to proceed with allogenic and bone marrow transplant. So this is a work in progress, um, and the main toxicity that we have encountered was myelosuppression. So that's something that we are tweaking by reducing the number of venetoclax. Initially, it was uh, up to 28 days. Now we are uh, bringing the, the number of days of venetoclax to 14 days. Also, we are limiting the, the cuisatin that we used to give in the earlier versions of this trial. They were It was continuously. Now we are limiting it to 14 days with that. We are seeing still very good responses and also count recoveries is becoming much faster. So looking forward, obviously, on the more on the frontline arm enrolling more patients. So we'll know much more hopefully in the coming years.